Now, the U.S. is trying to partner with the several African countries for the long term. But some of these nations need the power to do so. U.S. President Barack Obama first addressed the continent's lack of electricity a year ago with his Power Africa initiative aimed at making power more accessible. The initiative could be uh, finding more support in a, a piece of legislation written with the same spirit but with a larger focus. Kendall Trammell has more. Nearly 68% of people in sub-Saharan Africa gather around a single source of light to spend their quality time together. Children study and do their homework in the dark, all because they have no access to power. Ben Leo is a senior fellow at the Center for Global Development. He says power is a critical development issue on the African continent. Power, by all accounts, is one of the most binding constraints for growth and economic opportunities in sub-Saharan Africa. You look at all the different statistics, the figures, the surveys, and it's at the very top of the list. And that's why the U.S. Congress is taking steps to address Africa's energy issue. The Senate Foreign Relations Committee announced the Energize Africa Act on June 24th. This bipartisan bill sets out to develop a strategy to implement sustainable access to electricity, provide the Overseas Private Investment Corporation with additional tools more hiring power and a five-year reauthorization and assess the effectiveness of the investment institution. This comes after the passing of the U.S. House of Representatives Electrify Africa Act on May 8th that focuses on the same reforms as the Senate Power Bill. They're both necessary in providing a political statement, a political commitment to address this issue. An issue that's affecting local businesses across the African continent. One businessman in Nigeria says his business, along with several others, face economic setbacks because of the limited power in his country. Power works in many, many countries, so they have to find out whatever is going right in those countries and make it work. I, see, I don't understand. No one is able to come to tell me why power has not worked in Nigeria. I'm not a, like I said, I'm not an engineer, but I honestly, light should work. I sincerely don't care how it should be done, but light must work. Every young man, every striving business needs power to work. Energize Africa is building off of the foundation laid by U.S. President Barack Obama's initiative that just marked its one-year anniversary. Access to electricity is fundamental to opportunity in this age. It's the light that children study by. With the help of Energize Africa, U.S. President Barack Obama's vision of doubling power access in Africa could be expanded. By taking this approach, you can address an African concern, promote U.S. business and African business, and do all of this at no cost to taxpayers. I think that's one of the major reasons that we're seeing bipartisan support on Capitol Hill for, for this legislation. President Obama's initiative is focused on six countries, which is a great start. Energize Africa bill really focuses in on this issue to make sure that whatever the executive branch is doing, they factor this in in a major way. So I think that's a big contribution. So good start. We'll have to keep a close eye on it um, and see where ultimately things go out. Only time will tell, but as for now, all eyes will be on Washington. Kendall Trammell for VOA News. Thanks, Kendall. Now, for more on efforts to energize Africa, joining us in London is Dr. Kande Yumkela, Chairman of UN Energy and former Director General of the United Nations Industrial Development Organization. Uh, Dr. Yumkela, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you for having me. And thanks for being there. Now, one question first I want to ask. Uh, the U.S. Uh, President Obama's uh, Energize Africa initiative and uh, the UN Energy, do they complement each other or are they fundamentally different in the way they approach uh, the issue of energizing Africa? They complement each other very much. Uh, President Obama identified energy access as a major input into Africa's economic diversification and economic prosperity initiatives. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon also identified energy access as a means of prosperity and a means for achieving Millennium Development Goals in all developing countries, particularly in Africa, where the energy, pro energy poverty problem is more en uh, 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 entrenched. Yeah. And of course, as, as uh, uh, your colleague uh, Ben Leo mentioned, uh, Africa loses quite a bit already because of lack of energy. I give you a number, two to three percent of GDP is, is lost because of unreliable energy. But you also have almost 800,000 premature deaths 
due to people using charcoal and firewood mm -hmm. or cow dung for their primary energy needs and of course household yeah. air pollution yeah. uh, uh, because of those uh, uh, energy sources. Now, uh, what are the most viable energy sources in Africa and how can they be maximized to the maximum benefit of the continent? It's a vast continent. It is a vast continent, but uh, you can look at a number of solar radiation maps. It has probably uh, some of the highest solar radiation exposure than any other continent. So there is a, a huge opportunity for solar power, a lot of rivers that can be harnessed for hydropower, and of course biomass for uh, bioenergy. Uh, but in particular, remember that um, Africa also, in, in the last five years, 30% of the oil and gas discoveries were on that continent. And so you can see that this continent has a, a significant amount of energy resources. Question yeah. is, how do we harness them? How do we integrate, it, integrate them with available technologies and, and to make energy access a reality for all Africans? Very quickly, to what extent do you notice that African nations actually prioritize the issue of energizing the continent in terms of policy? Oh, it's, be, mm -hmm. it's become a real issue now for a number of leaders. In fact, I, I am on my way to uh, Abidjan and Burkina Faso uh, to meet with the heads of states and their ministers in those countries. Africans feel the impact of lack of energy. In some of those countries uh, like Burkina Faso or Liberia, Africans are already paying 38, 40 or 50 cents per kilowatt hour compared to 4 and 7 cents in other parts of the world. So the African leaders from Ethiopia to Rwanda to Cote d'Ivoire to, to Sierra Leone to Liberia, they've all prioritized energy. Well, the challenges are there. How do they formulate the right policies to crowd in okay. investments? Mm -hmm. How do they de-risk those investments? Thank and of you. course, the technologies that are needed to be deployed. A conversation to be continued. Dr. Yamkule, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Okay, that's uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Kande Yamkule, who is the director, who is the chairman of UN Energy and former director general uh, United Nations Industrial Development Organization.